Uh, my name is okay. My name is Colleen McKinney. I am the director of engagement at the Center for Good Food Purchasing. Um, the Center for Good Food Purchasing is a national nonprofit organization, and we're headquartered in the Bay Area of California. And I'm joining you today from the West Coast. I live in Seattle. Um, so this is my first meeting of the day. So pardon me while I wake up a little bit. Um, but I um, have been at the Center for Good Food Purchasing for um, the, about almost 10 years since we were, we were founded in 2015. And then before that, I was working at the Los Angeles Food Policy Council, um, where I was supporting the development of the Good Food Purchasing Program in its initial form um, there in LA. Um, and my role at the Center for Good Food Purchasing is really to support, uh, we work with um, a bunch of different partners in um, cities and regions all around the country who are advancing the Good Food Purchasing Program and values-based procurement framework within their communities and the institutions that serve their communities. Um, and so I support all of our partners in sort of um, ensuring that um, all the components of sort of community leadership and um, institutional procurement are co coordinated across those regions. Um, so I spoke with Kristen a few weeks ago um, and got to hear a ton about the uh, amazing leadership within your region. And I also um, have heard about your work from the, our partners at Community Food Advocates who are advancing the statewide Good Food New York bill. So um, it's just really an honor to be here today and share a bit more about our organization and our Good Food Purchasing Program. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen really quick, one second. Let's see. Okay, can you see my slide here? Yes, okay, yep. get myself that up real quick. Okay. So to, I'm going to start by sharing a little bit about who we are. Um, so the Center for Good Food Purchasing, as I mentioned, is a national nonprofit organization. We work um, in interconnection with um, partners in local regions across the country, and we work with large institutions to understand how their purchases align with good food values and support building a supply of good food by sort of aggregating large scale demand for food produced in a way that reflects our program values. Um, so our mission is to use the power of procurement to create a transparent and equitable food system that prioritizes health and well-being for people, animals, and the environment. And the main way that we do this is through the nationally networked adoption and implementation of the Good Food Purchasing Program. So the Good Food Purchasing Program, um, what it is, is essentially a metric-based framework, along with tools and technical assistance support to ensure that public food dollars are invested in a food system that supports five core values, which are in the center of the circle here. Um, so environmental sustainability, valued workforce, animal welfare, local and community-based economies, and community health and nutrition. And uh, all of this is built on uh, advancing the principles of equity, accountability, and transparency within our food procurement systems. So our, our goals and the way that we do this work is to inspire more and more institutions to adopt the program and commit to, the, to implementing, incorporating the five values of the program into their purchasing decision making, um, to increase their purchases of good food through their procurement processes, to aggregate enough institutional demand within and across regions to drive market change, um, and to unify sectors and stakeholders around a shared vision and framework that can build a movement that's strong enough to transform the food system. I, I wanna say a bit more about what we need, mean when we name each of the five values and the principles of equity, accountability, and transparency. Um, so, for us, equity, accountability, and transparency means centering food system transformation on investment in and justice for Black, Indigenous, Latin, Asian, and Pacific Islander communities and encouraging supply chain transparency so institutions can be accountable to their commitments and build authentic engagement with communities that they serve to ensure that impacted communities are engaged in procurement decision making. When we talk, when we say local and community-based economies, we mean that we're seeking to support local, diverse, family, and cooperatively owned food, food businesses to improve economic resiliency and community prosperity. 
environmental sustainability means sourcing from producers using sustainable practices and reducing carbon impacts of food purchasing to ensure that food production protects our ecosystems for current and future generations. Valued workforce means ensuring that food suppliers respect workers' rights to freedom of association and to bargain collectively for better wages and working conditions so that food chain workers can live and work with dignity. Animal welfare means purchasing from producers that provide higher welfare conditions for farm animals and or reducing the total volume of animal, to, uh, the total volume of animal products sourced to, to lessen the impact on the number of animals in the food system. And finally, community health and nutrition means prioritizing culturally relevant, high quality and nutritious food that promotes health equity. So all of the tools um, and framework that our program offers um, are aimed at uplifting these values within food purchasing at institutions. Um, just a quick background on the Center for Good Food Purchasing. Um, we were created by a cross, the Good Food Purchasing Program, our, our flagship program was created by a cross-sectoral working group of the LA Food Policy Council in 2011. And then in 2012, the city of Los Angeles and Los Angeles Unified School District became the first two institutions in the country to adopt the Good Food Purchasing Program. And then between 2012 and 2015, we were really focused on supporting the city agencies and the school district in implementing the framework and building the, the um, support tools to support them in doing that. And then as we started hearing interest from other cities and regions across the country um, who are noticing the work being done in LA, we spun off from the LA Food Policy Council and created the National Center for Good Food Purchasing to manage and house the Good Food Purchasing Program. And today we're working um, in more than 25 cities and counties across the country to um, implement the framework. So our job at the Center for Good Food Purchasing is really um, to support institutions in meeting commitments to the five values of the program and advance equity, accountability, and transparency. So as an example of what this looks like, um, we'll, when we get it connected with a food service director um, at a school district or a hospital or another um, municipal agency, we start with an evaluation, which we call a baseline assessment. This is essentially a snapshot in time um, that shows where their food dollars are going and how their current food purchases align with the values of the program. Then we work with them to make meaning of those results, to basically see where they are, see where they want to get, set some goals, and then set an action plan to get there. So we support them with understanding the types of actions that they can take that um, we've seen lead to change in those values in the program. And then each year or every other year on a regular timeline, we assist with tracking progress. So we show um, the progress that they're making and then uplift their the best practices and their leadership um, in celebrating success um, and, and amplifying the work that they're doing. So that's sort of an overall like snapshot of how we work with institutions to advance the program goals. Um, Los Angeles Unified School District is, to be fair, one of the largest institutions that we work with, but they provide a really nice case study of where an institution has been able to make significant impact um, through shifting their purchase decision making through the pro to the program toward the program values. So they've taken steps and made progress across each of the five values of the program, including increasing their purchasing. They spend about $125 million annually on food, and they um, increased uh, about $20 million of that to uh, be purchased from local businesses, which um, supported the creation of 153 local jobs. Um, they shifted their uh, chicken products purchased to be 100% raised without routine antibiotic usage. Uh, workers in their supply chain were able to advocate for um, a union contract with their employer and increase their wages by 40% for 320 workers in that supply chain. They were, they were able to reduce the total animal products that they purchased by 15%, which is associated with a re reduced carbon footprint of about 11%. And they were able to decrease their overall processed meat served by about 21%, um, which is associated with about a 1.3% reduction in overall risk of chronic diseases. 
Um, so this is just a snapshot of the types of impacts that one large institution was able to make, but we've seen institutions of all different sizes um, make have significant impacts in terms of increasing their lo local sourcing um, and increasing the overall amount of um, uh, whole and minimally processed food that they purchase, for example. And as I mentioned, we're currently, um, we've grown significantly over the last 10 years or so um, since we left, uh, since we spun off um, from Los Angeles, and we now work in about 25 cities and 10 states, plus Washington, D.C., um, and that represents over 65 institutions, many of whom have adopted policies um, committing to the values in their purchasing, um, and it includes um, a variety of different agency types, including school districts, hospitals, and universities, uh, parks departments, aging, homeless services, emergency feeding, um, juvenile detention centers, and others. Um, and in total, the impact, food spent impacted is over $1.1 billion um, across all of these institutions. And this can give you a snapshot of, of who is actually involved. And I'll send this um, slide deck to Kristen following the presentation so you can take a look more closely if you're interested, but you can see um, the types, um, the specific institutions and the types of institutions they are all in those cities and regions all across the country. Um, we're very partnership oriented. So we work with um, a number of national organizations who represent um, all the values of the program to provide different um, support and expertise to ensure that we're advancing these values in a way that's most aligned with um, the leadership in the field. Um, so many national organizations that have uh, local representation, including ASPCA, um, UFCW, uh, International Brotherhood of Teamsters, and so forth, are um, involved in um, the like national campaign around the Good Food Purchasing Program. And then, as I mentioned, I also work closely with many of our local partners um, who are in both community-based or grassroots organizations, as well as um, folks who are embedded within cities and counties who are um, helping to coordinate and advance the goals um, on, uh, in partnership with others, um, other like with the agencies and in the institution or um, in collaboration with community-based partners. And then before I close, I just wanna give a quick snapshot of the types of resources and support that we provide for institutions who are participating in the program. Um, so generally our support falls into four buckets. Um, the first is the sort of assessment and analytics, and this is that framework that I was providing in terms of providing reporting for institutions over time. Um, so we help institutions with collecting, purchasing records from their vendors and then clean and, and normalize that data so that it can be analyzed and used to help the institution make good decisions with it. Um, and then we provide annual reporting with trend analysis, and we can also aggregate within and across sectors within a region or nationally to be able to provide information that helps institutions benchmark or, um, or collaborate um, across institutions within a region. So we've definitely seen um, institutions use the information um, like across a whole state even to, to advance decision making. Um, we provide training and technical assistance, so we support institutions um, in training their vendors and doing action planning, and we provide guidance on bid language and solicitations to support um, incorporating and getting these values incorporated in agreements with vendors. Um, we have some online tools and resources, including um, resor a resource library. Uh, supplier information um, and like impact modeling in terms of like being able to explain um, when you reduce your carbon footprint, how that equates to taking cars off the road or things like that to help sort of tell the story more effectively to stakeholders um, who are not in the day to day of doing values based procurement work. Um, and then we also um, convene communities of practice, both for community based partners who are advancing the good food values in their region, as well as institutions who are operating food service programs um, who are um, learning from one another about what's working in this um, in their implementation. This um, this slide gives you a link um, when you have it to a toolkit that we have for action planning that supports institutions. Um, in advancing the values through their, their policy or their practices at the institutional level. So we have tools around um, procurement, cost management, 
sourcing good food um, and working with community partners. Um, so you can see some of those resources here. This is a snapshot of the type of um, like report that an institution receives um, around how their purchasing aligns with each of the five values. So you can see that it shows a breakdown of of sort of performance by each of the values. These are local economies, environmental sustainability, and so forth here. Um, and then a snapshot of sort of the types of purchasing that they're making overall. And then beyond this, institutions also get deep dives into each of the value categories where they can see information about some of the suppliers that are supporting um, their achievement in that value, how much of each kind of product is, is being purchased that aligns with that value and like information about how it aligns with our good food purchasing standards. Oops. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that in the last year or so, we've also deepened our investment in policy advocacy um, as co-founders and leaders of the good, Federal Good Food Purchasing Coalition. So as part of this coalition, we're supporting efforts to ad advance and ensure the federal government is leveraging its incredible purchasing power toward good food values, um, which is important at the local level um, because off, like many programs that um, that federal government is operating, including the USDA commodity purchases, have impacts at the local like school district level and so forth. And so really making sure that um, that all of that that advocacy can help support what's happening at the local level as well in terms of values based purchasing. That's everything I had prepared um, today to share. So I'm happy to take any um, any questions that you might have. Thank you. Um, I guess I will leave it open for a moment. Oh, there you are to see if anyone had any questions. You can feel free to just come off mute or raise your hand. Um, I think we're a polite and friendly enough group that it wouldn't become too chaotic if you just came off mute. Great, I have a few questions. <laughs> I was gonna let other people ask questions first, you know, um, going through that, thanks so much. I was really excited. You know, I've been on the website before, so it is something I'm familiar with, um, but was excited to see the call out to different types of resources that are available. You know, looking at this group here, I think there's two things that come to mind. Um, and it's what uh, most of us, I think don't work for organizations or institutions that would be doing like large purchasing like this. Um, and so thinking resources for two different avenues. One is, uh, are there resources that people can learn more about the values or the standards and maybe how to do a little bit of uh, um, strategy building and, you know, identify metrics for themselves, like reporting out. Um, that's one. And then two, uh, maybe like uh, things that if we are in conversation with our community partners who are institutions to be able to share information with them. Like I know some folks work with the school district. Um, we have other large institutions that say like, hey, we heard about this thing. Here's like, what's the word I'm looking for y'all? Like here's like this like promo, this thing that shows you why you should adopt it. Um, they think those were like, sorry, I had two questions and I asked them in one, but those yeah. were. Yeah, yes. I have a couple of resources that I'm going to drop into the chat that I think might be helpful. So the first is like a one page overview of the program, the values, and um, sort of how the Good Food Purchasing Program works. Um, and then the second is an, a summary of the Good Food Purchasing Standards, which is maybe like a second phase of resource, but helps you to understand sort of when we are measuring um, an institution's alignment with the program, what the types of like certifications or supplier or product attributes that we're reviewing look like. Um, and then I think, let's see, I'm sure there's other things that I could drop into the chat here, um, but I don't trying to think of what they are. There was one other thing that was coming to mind. Oh, um, 
impact the impact hub um, is the a website that we built that sort of get helps make the case it's intended to help make the case for doing values based food purchasing um, by like supporting some of that social math calculation that I was describing so I'm also going to drop this link in here um, and then there are this site gives additional case studies and examples from other cities um, across the country um, and information about more information about each of the values of the program and then resources in terms of some of like the research um, that backs that supports like um, the work in each of the five value categories. So this is another place that you can send people for more information in addition to our website. Amazing. Thank you. I've got the, I think the second link that you put in there, I've got that one open. And it's so great because I also see like qualifying certifications under environmental sustainability with like very specific logos. Like I think that is something that is like a quick and easy thing when you're talking with somebody else to be like, okay, you don't have to be an expert in standards on environmental sustainability, but here are some easy and quick ways to identify products that would meet these standards. I think that kind of information um, is really helpful. Yeah, we also have um, uh, on the action planning website that I mentioned, we have like a solicitations toolkit that is public that anyone can use. Um, and it offers some resources just if somebody is, you know, like trying to figure out how to incorporate, you know, more transparency with their vendors into their um, bids and solicitations, like what others have done or what some of the best practices are. So like even before making a full commitment to shifting all of these values, like some steps that they could take. And I can also drop that in here as well. Um, and yeah, I think just to like, to expand on what you were just saying, one of the things that we do, um, so like an institution doesn't have to themselves go and evaluate every product um, for it, like whether or not it has a certification. Like we we collect um, with with institutions, we collect the line item purchasing records from their vendors. Um, and then uh, we essentially ask for information about the producer and the production location. And then we do research, like further research on the products and the suppliers to determine if there are certifications, at least that we can like a firm are associated with those products or or not just certifications, but also attributes or other like uh, characteristics of the supplier, um, whether or not it's like a locally owned uh, family owned business and things like that as well. Um, and and that we, that's part of the analysis um, that we offer to the institution. So I think part of the value of the Good Food Purchasing Program is really bringing that the expertise that we've developed in doing like that and not research and analysis um, and even just collaborating with vendors to collect the information so that institutions don't have to become experts in that themselves, but have the information to be able to act on through what they are experts in, which is, you know, like up using their, their solicitations and their menus and all of that to um, advance the, their goals of their program. Mm. Did anybody else have a Hi, Trina. Um, yeah, I have a question just because I, I was um, I come from a food purchasing in schools background, and um, while at Bard, we did a lot with the Real Food Challenge, and I was actually like going on their website the other day and looking for more information. Are they still around? And do you guys ever work with them in partnership? And kind of what's what's the main difference between your programs besides like who you serve? Yeah, so yes, they are still around. They've gone through some transitions recently. Um, sorry, where'd you go? Um, and so they are, they actually do have an updated website, which I can send to you. Um, I think their old link is no longer active, but this is where you can find more information about Real Food Challenge. Um, and then, so primarily Real Food Challenge has, um, has served the or the university, college and university sector. And, and so the primary difference has really been in, um, in just sort of where we're working. Um, and at the same time, there have historically been differences in how we were measuring and defining good food. And in 2020, I think 2021, 
I can't even remember, 2020, I think, we started a process to actually, a along with another organization, Healthcare Without Harm, to align our three like standards to the greatest degree possible so that we're all like communicating the same definitions and the same strategies to institutions in terms of how to meet these goals since we're working across different sectors, um, but often with many of the same vendors, for example. And so just being able to have some collective um, like language that we're using, collective strategies that we're recommending. Um, so that collaboration uh, was called um, well, we are a part of a collaboration called Anchors in Action, and that project was the uh, Good Food Purchasing Framework, and I'm dropping link a link in for more information about that as well. Um, but yes, we are collaborators and like trying to ensure that we're in coordination as much as possible um, so that we're moving in the in the same direction. Thanks. And just so everybody knows, we're putting the links in the agenda as well. So you don't have to remember all of them or save them. They will be in the agenda, which will serve as the notes for the meeting. Um, I just want to say thank you. That was great. And you answered a question that I couldn't quite formulate in my head about solicitations. So it's really helpful. And also, I'm very impressed at how you can... Um, identify resources as you're typing or as you're talking and putting them in the chat. It's very impressive. Um, but I don't have a question. Just saying thank you. That is my Google. I have all of them bookmarked in my Google Chrome and I can just like type in the keyword and I've done this a few times. <laughs> thank you. I have a question. Um, sort of specific. I was just looking through the website and I didn't see any of the case studies, but I don't know that I, you know, looked deeply enough. Have you had any success in working with any um, prison systems as, as they're huge buyers? Yes, we don't have, um, I don't think we have like a sector specific case study on a prison system, but we, we, um, that's, that's not true. Um, I'm going to drop in, this one might be harder for me to pull up quickly. So I'm going to, after that compliment, totally flub this. But um, I, we did, we were part of a project um, with a par partner, our longstanding partner in the Bay Area to, uh, it was a regional food system partnership grant that just concluded, um, I think a two or three year grant. Um, and part of it was sort of support for um, the, the region as a whole, but then cross-sectorally the, the institutions within a region across jurisdictions. So we had, um, like corrections facilities, both from um, Alameda County and San Francisco uh, participating within the project um, and developed toolkits and resources to support um, like the specific needs of corrections environments um, in, in sort of in trying to advance these goals. So we have a toolkit that we developed. And so it's not a case study per se, but I think that we have some of the like content within that um, might speak to some of the questions you have. So I can drop that in uh, as soon as I dig it up as well. <laughs> Thank you. I know it's historically really difficult to like change anything, at least within the New York State Department of Corrections. I've asked a lot about these sorts of things and it's really tough. So yeah, and any any resources that you have would be great. Thank you. Um, on that note, I can also follow up with you, Suzanne, for at um, a uh, New York State Health Foundation summit, that food system summit that I went to in December, there was somebody there who was working on food in the uh, prison system in New York State. So let me go find that person's name because she was very much, I think, if is not already aware of this, she's very aligned with kind of this type of work. So. Oh, let me send that to you, just in case. Yeah. Ooh. Um, linked within this second publication I just dropped into the chat um, is there's a like roadmap document that sort of collects what everything we learned through this project, and then there's uh, links at the bottom of the page to toolkits that were developed for each of the sectors, and they were developed in partnership with technical assistance experts. So Impact Justice was a um, is a like expert in the like prison spaces specifically like um like justice in the prison system um and so they ad advanced or they sort of contributed to this toolkit as well um and then I was trying to figure out there's one other resource I wanted to share just because I 
like it. Uh, oh, within the first the first Bay Area link I just provided, there's a link to this dashboard that we developed for the region. I'm sorry if I'm like overloading with information, but uh, this is lit. I'm happy to have a, an audience that's interested. So um, there's a link to a dashboard that we developed that also shows comparisons of um, Bay Area institutions across um, all of the sectors that we were able, that we enge have engaged in the program and then um, benchmarking them across regions as well for other like hospitals, prisons, school districts, et cetera. Um, and then within that there's, you can explore different tabs, but there's also like, like a supplier link that shows, or a supplier list that shows all of the suppliers that the Bay Area institutions are purchasing from and how they align with the values in the program. And so the goal, like sort of the next step that, of um, that project is to try to figure out how to use that information collectively across institutions to, um, to set strategy and just like, you know, increase sourcing from the, the more values aligned producers collectively across the institution. So there's this is like still a work in progress, but this dashboard is supposed to sort of help guide the goal setting and strategy. Ooh, thank you. Any other questions? Um, I will ask maybe one more question is, so we've got all this information and say there is an institution, like so we, I think everyone in the room generally kind of works with institutions. I'm trying to look around to see who's here versus being representatives of the institution. Um, either way, if an institution locally is interested in working and becoming a partner with the Center for Good Food Purchasing, curious, like what are the steps to, uh, um, to doing that? Is it like you apply, you ask questions, you just sign up? Um, curious what those next steps are. Yeah, right now the best thing to do is to get in touch either like with our info email address or with me directly um, and I'll have a conversation with the institution or with, with you if you're interested in working with a local institution. Um, but are not a representative of an institution. Um, and then I think moving forward, we're also going to be implementing like uh, sort of not an application process, but like we'll have a survey that allows us to collect some of the key information that I have typically been having, having collecting through conversation. Um, so we're sort of formalizing that process. But as of right now, the best next step is to just connect them directly with me. And is it Free. Did you say something about this? Is there a fee associated with it? Yeah, there's a fee associated with the um, the services. So the value of the um, assessment, uh, so an annual assessment. So annually, the value is fifteen thousand dollars, and that supports all of the um, the data collection and analysis and reporting and action planning support and all of that that we do. Um, and then often institutions have um, we we there are like funders or um, grants or whatever that institutions will incorporate that fee within um, so that it's not like a direct impact on their budget. Um, but there's a variety of ways that we see institutions cover the fee. We also often subsidize some of it as well. Oh. Um, thank you. And I know um, we've talked in this group about the values-based procurement bill that um, was introduced by Senator Hinchy last year and it passed in the Senate. Um, that is going to be that is in the assembly this legislative session um, and so it seems really positive that it will pass uh this year which means that let's see um which if it does pass that will just allow institutions in the state of new york to not have to go with the lowest responsible bidder for food um, they can go 10 percent above that lowest bidder if they meet one of the values, which is essentially the good food purchasing values. Um, so that's something that, you know, hopefully will be exciting. You know, there's a lot there, um, you know, in terms of uh, how that will be implemented and what that will look like. But for institutions, you know, who are using, I believe, state funding, um, that will be an allowable thing at least. So it might be a time where your institutions will be interested in this. We just wanted to make sure that we had the resources um, provided to you in case folks ask, ask about it. Um, then I'll leave a, like a brief pause a moment before I stop recording to see if there's any final questions. 